Steel Magnolias, as they say in Hollywood, has legs. It's everybody's story. It doesn't look like a Hollywood staged movie. It fits so beautifully in the town where it really happened. You know, it keeps going. It doesn't stop. The play is still being performed. One way or the other, it is a universal story. 30 years later, it's still a great story. I have no bad stories about Steel Magnolias. And you know, here we are now, 30 years later since the film premiered, and it's still a big deal. People come here, walk down the street looking for the filming sites for Steel Magnolias. It's amazing. But after Steel Magnolias now, it's time, any time of the year, basically to come to Natchitoches to see the locations, the film sites, etc., and hear the stories. I'm Tom Whitehead, and I worked on Steel Magnolias. I was the production location consultant which is an unusual title of a film credit. It means that I did just about anything they needed to have done here in Natchitoches to make the connection between the community and the movie production successful and pleasant. People who come uh, are not always aware that the story is true and that the story happened to a Natchitoches family in the town of Natchitoches. My name is Barbara Bailey. My husband Doyle and I have a tour business here in Natchitoches. When they come for a Steel Magnolia tour, I get in the car with them and we tour the filming sites of the movie. And one of the things that they really uh, can appreciate is how the name of the movie came about and what inspired it. Bobby Harling said, and I heard him say this, he said that one of his mother's friends, a neighbor in the neighborhood where he grew up, had a steel magnolia weight and that the base of it was square and heavy, but on the top of it there was an open steel magnolia flower on it. And he thought of that so many times and so he applied that to the women in the movie. So the name Steel Magnolias uh, applies to women who are as soft and fragrant as a southern magnolia, but as strong as steel when the occasion calls for it. Of course, the play had a local root and a connection with Bobby Harling and the real people living here in Natchitoches. But the other point that really made the film expand was the actresses. You know, Shirley MacLaine, Olympia Dukakis had just won an Oscar, Sally Fields had won Oscars, Herbert Ross was a renowned director. It was just the moment that occurred in time. Everything came together. The, the stars, and of course we had the young Julia Roberts, her first big film, and uh, it was an, a, ma a magic moment here. Um, I got involved, another project I worked on that was fun was the armadillo cake that was at the wedding reception. Problem was, they had, nobody had made an armadillo cake before, and they needed gray frosting. We found a lady, a great lady out here in the country that made cakes, made, and uh, we started with her two, three weeks ahead of time. Every day she made a cake, an armadillo. She figured out how to make an armadillo shaped cake. But then the problem was the gray frosting. So every day we'd go out there and pick up a cake with a frosting, come over and put it outside the building because it was going to be filmed an outside scene at the wedding reception. And we let it sit there to see what the temperature did to the cake. I cannot tell you how many armadillo cakes that woman made and we bought because we were just testing the frosting color. So you, add, you did everything you could to avoid any possible problems. And when you did that, that's what you spent a lot of time and money doing, was avoiding problems like that. It is about loss and recovery. It's a universal story and it did a great opportunity of capturing Natchitoches for what it really is, and it's a story about Natchitoches. It shows support, love, consideration, friendship, all of those things. So it, it has a really an amazing talent that made up the film, but also the amazing community that became a part of the whole experience.